Hello everybody, this is Sister Annette. We're taking Adventures on Route 66 and we're on lesson four. In the first three lessons, we've covered the days of creation, Adam and Eve getting kicked out of the garden. We've covered their kids, Cain was able to kill Abel, unfortunately, Seth, um, Noah building the ark, his son, Shem, him, and Japheth, uh, the Tower of Babel. All that in lesson two and last week last time in lesson three we've talked about abraham the promise of a son his nephew lot lot's wife his wife sarah ishmael being born by hagar wait that was hagar that i showed you not sarah and here's sarah and isaac and god asking abraham to offer isaac but sparing him sending a ram in his place we've covered a lot of stuff and we're still in the first book of the bible genesis now here's my clue for what we're going to talk about today do you know what this is it's a wedding veil it's my wedding veil almost 35 years ago i wore this and it was all new and pristine and I think it still looks pretty and um, it's a little yellowed with age but I keep it it has special meaning for me of course <laughs> having a hard time with it this is a veil we're going to talk about weddings a few weddings in this in this lesson today the first one I want to talk about is um, has to do with Abraham's son do you know Abraham's son's name can you remember it Isaac that's right Isaac was not married and Abraham wanted him to get married and have a family because remember God said you're gonna have lots of grandchildren great-grandchildren great-great-grandchildren you're gonna have a lot of descendants like the stars in the sky and the sand and the dust of the earth so Isaac he wants Isaac to get married and have children and Abraham did not want Isaac to marry any of the girls in the new country in which they lived so what do you think he did doesn't want him to marry any of the girls around there he sent his servant back to their home country where they used to live to find a bride for Isaac Abraham knew that choosing the person you marry is a very important decision it's one of the most important decisions you'll make in your life now right now you know you're a kid you're not thinking about getting married and that's good but someday when you are, just remember, it's one of the most important decisions that you make and you should pray about it. And the rest of your life and your family are going to be greatly affected by the person that you choose to marry and have a family with. So let's see what happened when Isaac got married. A wife for Isaac from Genesis 24. Abraham said unto his servant, Go to my country and to my relatives. Get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant took ten of his master's camels. I counted. They really did draw ten camels in this picture. <laughs> okay. And he left with ten camels. Ten camels. There must have been a bunch of supplies for this journey. He made his way to the town of Nahor. He stopped near the well outside the town. He made the camels get down on their knees. It was almost evening. It was the time when women go to get water. Then the servant prayed. Remember how I told you it's important to pray about who you're going to marry? This servant has been entrusted by Abraham to find a wife for Isaac, and he's going to pray about it. Lord, give me success today. I will speak to a young woman. I'll say, please lower your jar so I can have a drink. Suppose she says, have a drink of water. I'll get some for your camels, too. Then let her be the one that you have chosen. For Isaac so he wants to get the right girl and he's asking God for a sign basically before he finished praying Rebecca came out she had a jar on her shoulder she was very beautiful so there's Rebecca 
The servant hurried to meet her. He said, please give me a little water from your jar. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll get water for your camels too. That's just what the servant had prayed about. The camels finished drinking. Then the man took out a gold nose ring. He also took out two gold bracelets and he gave them to Rebecca. Rebecca had a brother named Laban. She hurried out, or he hurried out, to meet the man. Laban said, the Lord has done this. He asked Rebecca, will you go with this man? Think about Rebecca. She's, uh, is she going to be willing to leave her family here and travel with this servant to a place she's never been? Will you go with this man? Yes, she said. So the servant took Rebecca. She became Isaac's wife and he loved her. So there's the first wedding we're talking about today. Um, what did Abraham's servants pray? Abraham's servant pray so that he would know who God had chosen as a wife for Isaac. We just read, so I'm sure you remember. He prayed that the girl who offered to water his, his camels after he asked her for a drink, that that would be the one. So Rebecca came out, he asked her for a drink, and she offered to water his camels too. All right, how many camels did the servant have? Do you remember? 10. Do you know how much 10 camels can drink? Well, I wasn't sure. I, I heard camels could drink a lot, so I looked it up. And I found varying amounts, 30 to 50 gallons of water a camel can drink after you know, it probably hasn't had a drink in a while. So it's very thirsty, 30 to 50 gallons. Do you have a gallon of milk in the fridge? 30 to 50 of those for one camel. So if you had 10 camels, how many gallons of water would that be? Like 300 to 500 gallons? Am I doing my math right? 30 times 10, that's 300. 50 times 10, that's 500. Oh my goodness, I don't, I don't know how Rebecca did it. She had that water jug and she poured the water in a trough for the camels. That's what the Bible says when you read it in there. And I don't know if she asked someone to help her, but it, it would take a while to get water for 10 camels. But she offered to do it. So what he learned about Rebecca, maybe she was kind, she was thoughtful, she was a hard worker. Those were things he might have learned about her. And, oh, that was my question. I already gave away the answer. Let's see if you know. What was the name of the girl who watered the camels and became Isaac's wife? Rebecca. That's right. So, we actually have two timeline figures. We have Rebecca with her water pot. And we have the camel to remind us of the ten camels that she watered. So Isaac has a wife. Let's see what happened next. This is from Genesis 25. Rebecca couldn't have children, so Isaac prayed to the Lord. It's always good to take every, every question, every problem to God in prayer. So he prayed about it. The Lord answered his prayer. Rebecca had twin boys, Aw, Esau and Jacob. The boys grew up. Esau became a skillful hunter. So there he is. Jacob was a quiet man. Isaac liked the meat of wild animals, so Esau was his favorite son. But Rebekah's favorite was Jacob. Hmm, I don't think that's a great idea for the parents to be picking a twin to each be their favorite. This might not work out too well. One day, Jacob was cooking some stew. Esau came in from the country. He was very hungry. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that stew. I'm very hungry. Jacob replied, first, sell me the rights that belong to you as the oldest son. That was called the birthright. I'm dying of hunger, said Esau. What good are the rights, are those rights to me? Esau sold Jacob the rights 
that belonged to him. He traded food for the rights that belonged to the firstborn. Jacob gave Esau some bread and some stew, so Esau didn't care about the rights that belonged to the oldest son. Isaac had become old. He couldn't see anymore. So there's Isaac in the tent. He called for Esau. Isaac said, I'm an old man now. Hunt some wild animals for me to eat. Then I will give you the blessing before I die. My blessing. Look who's, who's noticing what's going on over here. Rebecca was listening. Esau left. Then Rebecca said to Jacob, remember, Esau's the favorite of his dad. Jacob's the favorite of his mom. So the mom goes to Jacob and she said, listen carefully. Do what I tell you to do. Bring me two young goats. I will prepare tasty food for your father. I want you to take them into your father to eat. Then he will give you the blessing before he dies. So she's trying to get the blessing for her favorite son instead of for Esau. Jacob said to his mother, Esau's body is covered with hair, but my skin is smooth. What if my father touches me? His mother said, just do what I say. Jacob wasn't sure about this, but every time he raised a concern, his mom had an answer for it. She took the best of Esau's clothes and put them on Jacob, and she covered his hands and his neck with the skins of goats. There we go. Then she handed Jacob the tasty food and the bread she had made. He went to his father. Jacob said, I'm your oldest son Esau. Eat some of my wild meat. Jacob went close to his father. Isaac touched him. Remember, Isaac's not seen very well now. So he touches him and he says, the voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Then Jacob said to him, come here, my son, kiss me. So Jacob kissed him. When Isaac smelled the clothes, he gave Jacob his blessing. So he can't see too well. So he's using his other senses like feeling and smelling to try to because he's just like, hmm, this doesn't really seem like Esau. Esau was angry. Do you see that? He was angry because of the blessing his father had given to Jacob. So we're going to pause here. I'm going to ask you some questions. Isaac and Rebecca had twin sons. Who was the oldest twin? Did you pick up on that? I'm sure you did. Jacob or Esau? It was Esau. So we have Jacob and Esau for the timeline. There they are. And they have symbols of things that have happened to them or are going to happen to them. Um, what is a birthright? Did you catch that? The birthright. The special privileges belonging to the firstborn son. The oldest firstborn son, he was the head of the family. When his father died, he was the next head of the family, and he got a double portion of inheritance. So he's got twice as much. How did Jacob get that birthright away from Esau? He traded him. He traded him a bowl of stew for the birthright. Was that a good bargain? Hmm. Doesn't seem like a good bargain to me. Now, he got the birthright, but he also got his father's blessing. How did he steal that blessing from Esau? That um, Isaac intended to give to Esau. He deceived his father. He and his mother together deceived his father. He had him wear skins, or she had him wear skins, so he would feel more hairy like his brother and wear Esau's clothes so he smelled like Esau. Yes, and they worked to de together to deceive Isaac. So Jacob has been tricking and deceiving and lying to people, to his own family, to get what he wants. Um, 
I'm not sure that's the right way to get good things, is it? What do you think? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. And we're going to see how this works out in Jacob's life. Isaac sent Jacob to get a wife. So Isaac and Rebecca are sending Jacob back to where Rebecca is from to find a wife and um, also to get away from angry brother Esau. He stopped for the night. The sun had already set. He took one of the stones there and placed it under his head. Then he lay down to sleep. That doesn't really seem super comfortable to me. In a dream, Jacob saw a stairway or a ladder, as some translations put it. Its top reached to heaven. The angels were going up and down on it. Angels are messengers, so they're carrying messages from earth up to heaven and from heaven down to earth, which would be an amazing dream to have. The Lord stood above the stairway. That would be amazing to see God at the top of the stairway. And he said, I am the Lord. I will give you and your children the land on which you are lying. I am with you. I will watch over you everywhere you go. So Jacob, even though he's not always acted right, he has the birthright and he has the blessing. And God is saying, I'm, I'm giving you the promise that I gave to your father and your grandfather. I'm going to be with you. Oh, Jacob gets married. Laban was the brother of Jacob's mother, Rebecca. So here's Rebecca's brother. And Laban had two daughters, Leah and Rachel. So when he goes back to the home country where his mother was from, he meets them. And Jacob was in love with Rachel. He said to Laban, I'll work for you for seven years to get your younger daughter, Rachel. So he's like, you know, you don't even have to pay me. I mean, I'll work for you for seven years if you'll let me marry your daughter. And um, I will earn that. Laban said, I'll give her to you. So Jacob worked for seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because he loved her so much. Laban had a big dinner prepared, but when evening came, he gave his daughter Leah to Jacob. When Jacob woke up the next morning, there was Leah. He said to Laban, what have you done? Why did you trick me? It's not fun to be tricked, is it? Laban replied, It isn't our practice to give the younger daughter to be married before the older one. I'll give you the younger one also, but you'll have to work for another seven years. So Jacob did it. He loved Rachel more than he loved Leah. Okay, so some questions for you. We're going to talk about weddings again. Yes, more weddings. Why did Isaac and Rebecca send Jacob back to Rebecca's home country to her brother Laban? Why, why, why? There's really two reasons. One, to find a wife. And two, to get away from who? Esau. Esau's very angry at Jacob for stealing his father's blessing and the birthright. So what did Jacob dream while he was on his way to Rebecca's home country? He had this amazing dream. What was it? Can you tell me about it? It was of a stairway or a ladder reaching from the earth to the heaven. And what, what were on the ladder or the staircase? There were angels, messengers. That's right. And at the top, was the Lord God and he spoke to Jacob and said he was going to give him the land he was lying on he was sleeping right there that that land was going to belong to him and that he was going to watch over him and be with him that's right okay Jacob ended up with two two brides that's not really what he wanted okay what were their names Leah and Rachel, that's right. And which wife did Jacob love? He loved Rachel. 
Rachel and Leah. Yes, and he said, I'll work seven years for Rachel and his uncle Laban tricked him. So he ended up marrying Leah first and then he had to work another seven years, but he got Rachel as his wife also. And it, it wasn't uncommon in those days to have more than one wife. So um, that's what happened. But did Laban treat Jacob fairly in all of that? What do you think? Was that fair to trick him into marrying Leah when he meant, wanted to marry Rachel? No, that wasn't fair, was it? And besides tricking him into marrying the wrong sister, he made him work how many years to earn those wives? Seven, and then another seven, which is 14. You're right, 14 years free labor for his uncle. And um, we read later that Laban changed his wages like 10 times. Laban was always play, playing tricks on Jacob. So do you think that Laban's treachery and deceiving Jacob and tricking him led to Jacob's failure? Is he going to be able to stop Jacob from being blessed by God? No, he's not because God made a promise to Jacob. Jacob has the blessing of his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham, and Jacob is going to prosper and become a wealthy man, but I think he's also learned that um, lying and deceiving and stealing from people is not the way to get the blessing. That is what he did when he was young to his own father and his own brother, and later he learned it's very painful to be lied to and tricked like his uncle tricked him. So remember the golden rule. That's what we're going to take from this. The golden rule, and I'm going to read it to you from Luke 6:31, And it says, as ye would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. Or as the Amplified Bible says, treat others the same way that you want them to treat you. Sometimes it's hardest with our own family. We just get used to being around them. And sometimes we don't talk as respectfully as we should, or we don't treat them as nicely. And we're like, oh, they're just my brother. But think about how you want to be treated and try this week to treat your brother or your sister, your, your mom, your dad, your friend, the way that you would like to be treated. Be kind, say nice things. Let's pray about that. Okay, and let's help. Let's ask God to help us to be truthful. It's very important. Um, Jacob started out being very deceitful and um, tricking people, and um, that's not, that's not a good way to live. It can kind of come around back on you when you treat people that way. So let's ask Him to help us, and let's thank Him for blessing us beyond what we deserve. Jacob got blessed way beyond what he deserved because God was with him. Even when he messed up, because he turned to God, God was with him. So we're going to turn to God right now. Jesus, thank you so much for your word and what we can learn from it. Lord, we mess up and we do things wrong, but we're turning to you now. Search our hearts, Lord. Forgive us of the things that we've done wrong. Help us to treat other people the way that we want to be treated. Help us to speak kindly. Help us to, to do good things for each other. Help us to have patience when we want to lose our patience and to get angry. We need your help with all of these things because it's so easy for us to mess up. And when we do mess up, help us to be quick to ask for forgiveness, Lord. This week, show us how to treat others better and, and help us to be truthful. Sometimes it's hard to tell the truth. Sometimes we want to deceive people so that we can get what we want. Please put truthfulness in us because you are truth, Jesus. We want to be like you. We thank you for the blessings that you give us, Jesus, more than we deserve. We thank you for that. We thank you for watching over us and always being with us in Jesus name. Amen. Need your Bible for this. Here's my Bible. And um, Jesus told us to treat others the way that we want them to treat us. And what do we call this rule? The golden rule. We're going to look in our Bibles and find it. And um, But first I want to ask you a question. 
can see part of the books of the Bible board here, so probably enough to figure out what I'm going to ask you. What is the first book in the New Testament? Do you see it? Matthew. Matthew. Okay, and in what section of the New Testament is Matthew? There's big words that show you the different sections of the Bible. So do you see that big blue word up there? Matthew is in the section called the Gospels, and it's the first gospel. So we're going to look in that first gospel. We're going to look in Matthew. So turn to Matthew, and you can pause me if you need to to find it. But okay, I wow, I opened right, right to chapter 7. So you're going to look for the big number 7. Remember, the bigger numbers show you the chapter numbers. So when you find the big number seven, then you're gonna go down and look at the little numbers until you get to number 12. Oh, it's circled in my Bible. Okay, I think I've looked this verse up before. Everybody have it? Like I said, you can always pause me. All right, we're gonna read it together. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So in the Old English, it's kind of more complicated to understand, but it's saying whatever, however you want people to treat you, you treat them that way. And this is, if you look in the law and prophets, that is the books of law and the books of prophecy. Jesus said that's what they're teaching you. They're teaching you to treat other people the way that you want to be treated. Okay, so the golden rule can be found in one of the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke, the third Gospel. So we're going to turn, we're in Matthew, we're going to turn a few pages over until we get to Luke, and we're going to find Luke 6. Oh, it opened to there because I had it marked for the Bible lesson. So we're going to find the big number 6. And you might have to turn the page like I do to get down to the little number 31. So there it is, 631. You ready? It says, And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. So once again, Jesus wants us to treat other people the way that we would like to be treated. And that is the golden rule. The soup for which Esau traded his birthright was made with lentils. You can find that in Genesis 25. And lentils are like a small flat bean. Um, and I have some dried ones somewhere, but I couldn't find them today. Um, but I do have lentil soup, which I heated up. Um, I would love to share with you so you can taste it. Um, there it is. You can kind of see the little, the little beans. I don't want to spill it on my laptop. Okay, I'm going to take a little bite. Mm. Pretty tasty. Would you trade something? It is tasty, but would you trade something as valuable as a birthright? Would you trade one of your most valuable possessions? for a bowl of lentil soup, or any kind of soup for that matter. But would you trade? Think of something, one of your most valuable things. It's so amazing that Esau was willing to trade his birthright. He's like, I'm gonna die if I don't have something to eat right now. I think maybe he was being a bit overly dramatic, but as good as lentil soup is, and I've had some really good homemade lentil soup before, it's probably not worth trading your most valuable possession for unless you really were going to die of starvation. Maybe you could get some lentil soup this week or make some lentil soup or just any kind of soup at all. When you do that, just think about Esau and think about valuing the good things that God gives you and not trading them away. And also think about the golden rule, which we learned about today, about treating others the way you want them to treat you. Remember... God's word is powerful. See you later. Mm.